Praises be to the King of kings and the Lord our God. He is wonderful. All praises be to the King of kings and the Lord our God. He is wonderful. Sunday morning service here at the Lake Tarpon Church of Christ. Jesus loves you. God loves you. The Holy Spirit resides within you. And he allowed us to wake up this morning and pray fully in our right mind with the use of all of our limbs. As I was listening to the hymn play, I was just thinking to myself, I can literally hear those words continue to play every single day, all night long. Oh, praises be to our Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Our God, He is wonderful. What a blessing to our ears. My question for you this morning is, are you remaining steadfast? Through the ups and downs that life brings to us, are you remaining steadfast? Through the trials and tribulations, are you remaining steadfast? When life throws a curveball at you, are you remaining steadfast? How are you doing this morning? Are you remaining steadfast in the one who has rescued, delivered, sanctified? Are you remaining steadfast in him? Rather, allowing him to reside in you. Let us pray. Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for this day that you have given us. Thank you for this time you allow us to come together to worship you in spirit and in truth according to John chapter 4, verse 24. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify you. We magnify your holy name. Thank you for all you do, all you have done, all you continue to do in our lives in advance. Thank you for our family, our church family. Thank you for our country and the freedoms that we have within our country. Thank you for working all things together for the good, for all those who love you and call according to your purpose. Father, I pray that you forgive the sins of our family, friends, and loved ones as well, that as we pray on their behalf, that you will have mercy upon them, that they too may come out of darkness and into your light. Thank you, Father, for a wonderful week, a wonderful weekend. Thank you for all that you allow us to do to bring glory to your name this week. And Father, I pray for the leaders of our country, the leaders of our congregation, the leaders of your church. I pray, Father, that we allow you to reign within us and to do the things that are pleasing in your sight with every decision that needs to be made. 
May you turn the hearts of the people who are, are leading our country toward you. Bless those in other countries who are struggling alike. Bless those who are having a hard time finding clothing and, and shelter and, and food. Father, I pray for those behind the prison walls. I pray for those who are battling in the spiritual battle, those who are addicted to drugs, that you help them to overcome it, those that are addicted to pornography, that you help them to overcome it, adultery, that you help them overcome it, having a lying tongue, that you will help them to overcome it. Father, may you be with us during our time of worship and always forevermore. In Christ's name, amen. Are you remaining steadfast? The biblical definition of being steadfast is this. Firmly fixed in place. Set your position immovable. You can't be moved that easy when things come along in our life. Are you remaining steadfast? Listen to Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And let us notice the plurality, not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, in due time, in God's time, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Do not become discouraged. Do not become discontented. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Notice this, count it all joy when we're tested. Count it all joy when things come into our life, right, to try to put us through a test. A test to see if God is truly going to see us through. How about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The only way, church, to remain steadfast in the faith is to remember four D's. Four D's, determination, desire, discipline, or you will be disqualified. Four D's, determination, desire, discipline, or you will be disqualified. I want to take you to the first point of this morning, and that is determination. We must be determined to remain steadfast in the faith we must be determined to remain steadfast in the faith listen to colossians chapter 1 verse 9. for this reason the apostle paul is saying who wrote this letter to the church of Colossae, since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So you have to be determined to do this. You have to be determined to go to a secular school to get a secular education. You have to be determined to go to a secular school to get a college education, to get a doctorate degree, to go to a preaching school. You have to have that determination to do the work, to show up in class, to study online, Right? To, to pass the test, to pass the finals, to get your degree. No different than the Bible. We have to be determined. Listen to this. Verse 11. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. So we have to have that determination that God has given us to remain steadfast are you determined to remain steadfast or are you allowing trials to overtake you the purpose in our hearts to be determined no matter what listen 1st Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12 that you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory 
to his heavenly presence and glory, to a relationship with him that he may be glorified through you. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance is longevity, right? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Being strong in the Lord is not allowing your emotions to control you, but you are putting your emotions aside and trusting God. Your emotions should not control you, but your emotions should be under the subjection of God. Listen to the second point. Being steadfast in the faith is not going to come easy. You, all, you also must have what's called desire, the want to. Right? The purpose. What's your desire? What's your purpose? Colossians chapter 2, verse 4. Colossians chapter 2, verse number 4. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, or literally, live it out, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. Notice what it says, walk in him, have the desire to live a Christian life so the world may see, your family may see, your church family may see, your co-workers may see, people may hear the, the encouraging words that come off your tongue, out of your mouth. Listen to Isaiah chapter 26, Isaiah chapter 26, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 8. Yes, in the way of your judgment, O Lord, we have waited for you. The desire of our soul is for your name and for the remembrance of you. With my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me I will seek you early. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Notice what it's saying. The desire of my soul, your soul consists of your mind, your will and your emotions are all in subjection to desire to seek after the Lord. Well, how about if we turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Listen. 1 Peter chapter 2. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babies, listen, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also as living stones are being built up, a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, therefore means making an application of what we read, and is also contained in the scripture that, one second, that, sorry, my, my pages got stuck. <laughs> Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stones which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. What is that saying? That Jesus Christ is in a rightful position. Men reject him, but we embrace him. Men neglect him, but we encourage his word in our lives. We have to have a desire that desire should burn in us. 
Being steadfast for the third point or steadfast in the faith will not come easy again, but we must have what's called discipline. And we know discipline isn't easy. Discipline is hard. Try working out, going to the gym, day after day, exercising, exercising, running, sweating, coming to exhaustion, right? You have to be disciplined to do that to get the results you're looking for. Athletes, they play sports, they have to show up to practice and play multiple games, 100 or 200, 300, whatever the games they play within the season, always on the road, home on the road, flying on the bus, hotels, this hotel. Why? Because they're disciplined to achieve greatness in what they're doing. Well, what about Christians? Colossians chapter 3, verse number 12. Colossians chapter 3. Verse number 12. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 12. Listen to these words. Colossians 3, verse 12. And the Bible says this. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another, even as, or who has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. You think that's not going to require you discipline to forgive others, even though they may have wronged you? But just think about the wrong that we did in the eyes of God, past and maybe present. Just think about that, and God forgives us. The Bible says, while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you, died for me, died for us. But the Bible also says, that he continually cleanses us from all of our sin in 1 John, I believe, chapter 1. So God is at work, and we must be at work in to forgive others. We must be kind. We must have tender mercies. We must be humble. We must be meek and long-suffering, patience. And let, listen, verse 14, sorry, but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let, Excuse me, the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you also were called in one body and be thankful. Friends, you have to be disciplined to allow this to happen. That means the television and the news that we hear and read are not taking residence or root in our heart to persuade us to say, God, what are you doing? We're disciplined. That means when it's time to come to worship service, we're coming because we're disciplined. The Bible says it was Paul's, he was accustomed to go into the synagogue every Sabbath, which was the Saturday, right? To plead with the Jews to follow Christ. We have to have discipline to show up to Wednesday night Bible study. I know we had a long day at work. I know we had to, we had to go home and, and do groceries and, and laundry, et cetera, et cetera. But the discipline comes to say, God, you know what? Your priority. All the other stuff is secondary. Why? Because I remember Martha coming to Jesus in the Bible and saying, Jesus, Mary, she's I'm, I'm over here cleaning. I'm, I'm getting things ready. And Mary's just not doing anything. She's near you. Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you're worried about too many things. Mary has done the right thing. She's sitting at the feet of Jesus, hearing his word. We have to be disciplined, friends, to do that. Hey, the apostle Paul was disciplined in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, don't you think? I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Friends, that's discipline. What about 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 15? For we are aliens and pilgrims before you, as were all your fathers. Our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. Discipline. Listen to Psalm 39, verse 12. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Do not be silent at my tears, for I am a stranger with you, a sojourner, as all my fathers were. Discipline, to seek God, discipline, to come before God in prayer. Being steadfast in the faith will not come easy again, 
we must be careful so we do not become disqualified. Disqualified. We have to have the desire, the determination. We have to be disciplined. If we lack these things, friends, please understand. We can be disqualified. But what do you mean? I'll show you what I mean in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above and not on the things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Listen to the key word. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. Discipline. Remember where God delivered you from. Remember your spiritual deadness that God has given you spiritual life. Remember so you do not, friends, become disqualified. Listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown... Therefore run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I what? Discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself shall become what? Disqualified. Paul says, I don't, I don't shadow box. No, I don't, I'm not on shadow box. I, I do what God wants me to do. I put my body in subjection. I don't want to be disqualified. Right? It's not like he's boxing the air. He knows the spiritual situation that he's in, that the devil's trying to come at him. So listen to what he says. He says that, don't forget, right? Listen to this. We must run this race. We must run it to win an imperishable crown. Don't run it with uncertainty. Run it with assurance. Friends, Let's just jump over real quick to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, as we speak about disqualification. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. And then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Friends, didn't we <coughs> do this in your name and, and that in your name, Jesus? To hear those words, depart from me. That's it. That's done. How fire and brimstone. It's true faith, friends, that will not fail to produce the fruit of good works. And this is precisely the point that James is making in James chapter 1. So this is a great time that I'm going to ask you to do a self-inventory. Take a moment and reflect at where you're at in Christ. I don't know your hearts. I may know you as a person. I may love you as a brother and sister in Christ. But God truly knows your hearts. Where are you at? I don't want you to be disqualified. I don't want you to allow circumstances and situations to overtake you, that you don't remain steadfast. I want the opposite for you. But you have to see where you're at. And if you need to accept God, you first must believe that Jesus Christ is truly the son of the living God. If you want to accept God and, and to learn how to be steadfast, you have to confess your sins. You have to repent of your sins. You have to be baptized for the remission of your sins. And then you need to walk in the newness of life, being faithful to God until the day 
He calls you and I home, friends. Or maybe you need to rededicate yourself. What are you waiting for? This is the day. Do a self-inventory. God is the true judge. We're just here to come alongside of you as you come alongside of us that we can be at in heaven together. Walk this life out. Encourage one another. Remember, it's the first day of the week. We have what's called unleavened bread. As we remember that sacrifice, the unleavened bread is symbolic of our Lord and Savior's body. Then we have juice. The juice symbolic of our Lord and Savior blood that was shed for our sins. And then we get what's called an offering. The offering is the blessing that we give back to God in the hands of the leadership, praying that they have the wisdom of God to, to delegate the money, the funds where they need to be. But God blesses us for doing the giving, right? Because also he's going to give back to us. So when you give, do it in a cheerful way. Don't worry about what's going to come after that because God is sure to bless you in multiple ways. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. In Christ's name, amen.